Good morning. I hope everybody can see me okay. I'm going to let the, the video feed buffer for a second. Good morning. I think we're on now. Um, I've changed some things up in the, the setting, as you can see. Um, I'll have the PowerPoint to my right, and you can see me here. Uh, a little less lag between what I say and what you see, so it's a little easier uh, for me to keep up with what I'm saying. But we have a very important topic to talk about today. As you know, this, this week is a very um, popular week uh, in our nation or in around the world. Um, and I think um, the subject that we're going to be talking about today uh, is, is very close um, on people's minds and, and people are, are dwelling on, on the subject of Jesus. And they're thinking about the cross. They're thinking about his death. They're thinking about his resurrection. And we're going to talk about both of those topics. This morning, we are going to talk about the death of Jesus and specifically answering the question, why did Jesus die on the cross? And the Bible is very clear why he died on the cross. But I think there's an important point that a lot of people miss. And uh, Lord willing, next Lord's Day morning, a week from today, we'll talk about the significance of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I hope you can tune in to, to the, the live Facebook feed at the same time next week. Uh, but for now, uh, I'd invite you to grab your Bible and have it ready. And we're going to be reading from quite a few scriptures, but I want you to follow along in your Bible if you can. And, and hopefully, uh, as uh, my wish is always, that you may be edified and blessed um, from this message. And I'm broadcasting this on my regular Facebook feed in hopes that I can reach a more broad audience. And I know uh, several of um, those that I attend with at uh, Huntington Church of Christ in Huntington, Texas are, are here. And I can see uh, Miss Sheila is here. It's good to see you, Miss Sheila. And I can see um, that Shelby had uh, made herself known here. Um, and there are others that are joining us and there will be others that join us later, I'm sure. But this feed will also be recorded after it's over. So you can go back and watch it again or share it with your friends and uh, many people may be blessed uh, in, in watching this. Uh, I see my good friend, um, uh, Sister Tammy Olson, is with us. It's good to see you, Tammy. Uh, I love you very much. It's good that you're here. Um, well, let's get into the topic. Um, uh, but before we do, I'd ask that you pause for a second, and I'm going to lead us in a prayer, and then we'll get started, okay? So let's bow our heads, and I'll lead us in a prayer. Our God and Father, we're thankful for this day. We're thankful for um, this wonderful technology we have, the internet and the ability to share uh, online. And even when we can't be with one another, we can talk with one another and we can learn from one another. And I pray that you help us through this time to be edified and to grow in our spirit and also to in our love for one another and our love for you. Help us to be more knowledgeable about what your holy word says and more thankful about what Jesus did for us on the cross. Um, Father, I ask you now um, to look upon us in mercy and tender care as we go through this lesson. Help us to be edified and help us to, to grow. And just in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Okay, so let's get into the lesson. Why did Jesus die on the cross? You remember, um, I, I can't even remember how many years ago, and uh, honestly, I've only seen the movie once, but do you remember the movie The Passion? Uh, of the Christ. Um, uh, Mel Gibson, uh, I think, is the uh, the star uh, or, or the who made the movie. And uh, Jim Caviezel uh, was the, the, the man who portrayed Jesus in the movie, if I remember correctly. But this movie, when it came out, I remember one thing is, is that it it stirred up a lot of people. It, it caused a lot of controversy. Um, it was called anti-Semitic. Um, people weren't very pleased with the graphic 
description uh, and depiction of the scourging and the crucifixion of Jesus. And, you know, sometimes the controversy of, of all of this centers around the reason that Jesus died. And people ask the question, was his death accidental? Um, uh, an unintended consequence of his teachings? Or was his death God's will, um, recognized and even accepted by Jesus in advance? Uh, the gospel message is quite clear as to why Jesus died for us, yet there is a reason that is often overlooked by a lot of people. And so I want to review what the Bible says uh, is the answer to this question, why did Jesus die on the cross? And I think um, first and foremost, and you, you probably know where I'm going, first and foremost, uh, Jesus died uh, on the cross. Uh, don't mean to hold you in suspense here. Let me fix my PowerPoint. <laughs> Jesus died on the cross to atone for our sins. Um, uh, this is the fundamental theme of the gospel. What does it mean, uh, atonement uh, or to atone? Well, let's read what 1 Corinthians 15 says. And Paul had something to say about the death of Jesus. He said, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. Um, Jesus died to atone for our sins. What does this mean? It, it means forgiveness. Jesus died so that our sins may be forgiven, so that they may be um, cleared. And I'll say one thing, whenever your sins are forgiven, whenever you, you, you do um, go through this, they're not just for, forgiven, but they're forgotten. And that's something that we need to understand about our sins. Whenever we are forgiven by God, he forgives us, but he never brings those sins up ever again. Uh, we may remember the things that we did in our, our life or our past life before we obeyed the gospel, but, but God has cleared uh, memory of, of those sins. He has, as the Bible says, thrown them as far as the east is from the west. He has forgiven. And that's something that we need to remember as a fundamental theme of the gospel is Jesus died so that we may have our sins forgiven. And not only did he die, but this death was foretold. Uh, in the Old Testament, in Isaiah chapter 53, if you turn in your Bible to Isaiah 53, I'm going to read for, uh, for you a, a very familiar passage of Scripture um, from the book of Isaiah, starting in verse 4 of Isaiah 53. Turn in your Bible with me, if you will, to Isaiah 53, starting in verse 4. Let's see what the Bible says. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Um, skip down with me to verse 10 now as we read from verse 10. Again, chapter 53 of Isaiah, verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. 
Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and he made intercession for the transgressors. Um, this was 700 years before Christ lived. Isaiah wrote these words, and he was talking about this forthcoming person. He was not talking about himself. Um, we remember that was a question that the Ethiopian eunuch brought up in Acts chapter 8, who is, as he read from Isaiah 53, and Philip came on him, came up to the chariot, and the, the eunuch asked him, who is he talking about? Is he talking about himself, or is he talking about somebody else? And then from that scripture, Philip preached Jesus to him. And that's who he's talking about here. He's talking about Jesus. And Jesus fulfilled these scriptures um, by his suffering and death on the cross. It was he who is the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world, as, as John beheld in John chapter 1, verse 29. John saw Jesus coming toward him. And he, he said these words, Behold the Lamb of God who comes and takes away the sin of the world. This is uh, something that God did um, in love. Uh, God offered him as the propitiation for our sins. Remember 1 John chapter 4 and in verse 9. Um, what does it say there? Well, let's read in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 9. In this, the love of, the, of God was manifested toward us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. And that's what John says uh, about why God sent Jesus to be the propitiation for our sins. And it was not an easy process. He suffered uh, in this process. And through this suffering, it was for the purpose to reconcile us back to God, to put us back in a, 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 a right relationship. And we all know what reconcile means. Whenever we reconcile our uh, checkbook, we bring it back to even, bring it back to zero. Um, the, the sin that had so long set as, as weight on our, our souls, and Jesus forgave um, as we obey the gospel, and that sin has been forgiven and, and done away with. And that brought us back to, to a right standing before God. This was done through the suffering of Jesus Christ. On the cross this was to provide redemption um, from sin this was by his precious blood that this happened as Peter said in 1st Peter chapter 1 and verse 18 he said knowing this that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct uh, received by tradition by your fathers but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. And Peter compares Jesus to this sacrificial lamb that was so often used in Old Testament practices. And it was for the purpose of forgiveness of sins. But Jesus is that lamb. Jesus is um, that perfect sacrifice, or was that perfect sacrifice. Uh, and his death was no accident. His death was part of God's predetermined plan. And it's because God loved us. As it said in Acts 2, 22, Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, signs, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God. It was them that took Jesus and crucified him and put him to death. But remember, this was the determined purpose of God. And God knew what he was doing. God sent his son, Jesus, to die for our sins. And folks, 
that's why Jesus died on the cross. It, it wasn't just an, an accident. It, it was purposeful because God is desiring that he um, that we have a, a good, a right relationship with him. And that's what he desires of all of his creation, all man and, and woman. He, he wants um, to have a relationship with Jesus died for all. And all who come to God through Christ by obeying the gospel may have that relationship with God that, that he desires um, to have. And so one, another thing that we need to talk about, um, about his death, is that Jesus died so that we may die to sin. And I believe this is the reason that uh, for his death that is often overlooked. When we enter into this week uh, of the year, and more people in our nation are interested in Jesus than any other part of the year. This is one of the few times uh, for most people, um, religious and, and not even, in some cases, not even religious, who think about Jesus, it may, it may even go to a, a church service somewhere. Um, Easter, and Christmas and uh, and strangely enough, Mother's Day are, are the three biggest days of the year where you see more people attending service. And people know and during this time of year, um, they think about that Jesus died for them. And that's absolutely true. Jesus died for, for all. But there's another reason why Jesus died. Jesus died so that we may die to self. Jesus died so that we may not sin any longer, that we may put away sin. As, as Paul said, put off the old man and put on Christ. Jesus died so that we may die to sin. It's often overlooked, and yet it's clearly stated in the scriptures. And what Peter said in 1 Peter 2 and in verse 24, he said, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. This is, this is what one of the reasons why Jesus died, so that we may live righteously. And this can only take place if our sins are forgiven. And we cannot be righteous if we are in sin because sin separates us from God. And the only way to uh, do away with this sin in the first place is to be forgiven of it. And you can only be forgiven of sin if you obey the gospel. We're going to talk about that uh, here in a little bit. But Jesus died so that our sins, uh, that Jesus died for our sins that we may die to sin. He died that we might die. And what does this mean? Well, we read uh, statements like in 2 Timothy 2 and verse 11. I have several verses up there on the, uh, the screen if you want to write those down and study those a little more thoroughly. But in short, what it says in 2 Timothy 2 and in verse 11, um, Paul says, this is a faithful saying. For if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we died with him, we shall live with him. So we don't physically die, do we? And we die to ourself. And when we die to ourself, it is for the purpose of living with Christ, living for Christ. That is one of the, uh, the basics of, of being a Christian. Being a Christian means that you are a follower of Christ. And if you are a follower of Christ, we must die to ourself. We must die to sin. Um, Paul said to the Colossians in Colossians 2 and in verse 20, he says this, Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourself to regulations? Um, the first part of that is what I want to focus on here. Um, he's talking to Coloss in the Colossian letter. He's talking to Christians, um, Christians, as he said, who have died with Christ. Uh, 
they have gone through this dying process. Um, this dying process um, is is one of the the things that a, a person must do um, whenever we decide we want to follow after Christ. Uh, we we must sacrifice some things, uh, and one of the things that we sacrifice are our sins. We we do away with our sins, and we uh, we die to self. And he says again in Colossians chapter three and verse three, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ. And so he's making this statement again. And one of the more popular and more famous statements, Galatians two and in verse 20, Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This is an attitude that, that every Christian should have and that every person who, who claims to follow after Jesus has to have in order to truly be a disciple is you have to be crucified with Christ and you have to live your life uh, according to what the Word of God says and, and not according to what, what Thomas says or, or what uh, your friend says or your parents say or or anyone else, but according to what God says. And we only know what God says by reading God's word. And we must live according to what God's word says, and specifically what Christ teaches and his apostles teach. We must, we must die, because that's one of the reasons why Christ died, so that we may die with him. Jesus died not only to atone for our sins, but to provide a, a, a means where we can die with him to sin and thereby live for righteousness. And I believe that's what Peter was saying in 1 Peter uh, 2 and verse 24. Again, he himself bore our sins on, in his own body on the tree that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness. That is the means by which we can, the death of Christ, a very significant thing. Um, there's more than just the acknowledgement, the, uh, the mental acknowledgement that Christ died. Um, it is also um, the desire to live for him. And, in, and that desire um, is also a desire to put away the sins that he died for in the first place. Why again live in sin um, if that's why Christ died in the first place? And surely not. Surely we have the attitude that, that Peter and Paul um, are showing here in the scriptures that Christ died for our sins. And so I want to live in Christ. I'm no longer going to live in sin. Something that we must uh, make an effort and make sure that we we do this thing in order to to be right with god unless we also die to sin we have to ask this question has jesus's death on the cross fully accomplished its purpose unless i die to sin um, uh, in other words let me put it this way he died for our sins but have we died to sin uh, and, and I'll ask this in our next point. Has Jesus died for you in vain? Something I want all of us to, to think about. And when we think about what Jesus did, who Jesus is, and how much he gave up, and what he accomplished on the cross in his death, we need to answer this question quite honestly in ourselves. Um, has Jesus died for me in vain? And so I need to ask myself this question. Have I died to sin? And so going along with this question comes another one. Uh, when, when is it that God views you as dying with Christ? When does this happen? When does God view you 
as being crucified with Christ, as Paul said in Galatians 2.20. When does this happen? When does being united with Christ in death happen? Um, as Paul said in uh, the Roman letter. When is it that we are dead to sin? These are all things that the scriptures command for us to be in the state that we, we have to be. But how does this happen? And, and what method does this take place? And Paul makes it very clear. And I believe it's easy to understand what the Bible says. And we need not to misunderstand what the Bible says. This happens when we are baptized into Christ. In the Roman letter, Paul is writing to Christians who have died to sin. And I'll ask you to turn to Romans chapter 6 for, for a lot of clarification on this topic about baptism. Turn to chapter 6. And maybe this is unfamiliar to you, or, or maybe if you're watching this and um, you're not used to hearing, um, hearing this, I ask you to be patient with me. You have your Bible open, I hope. Let's read what the Bible says. Let's be honest with, with our understanding of what the Bible says, because the Bible gives a very clear understanding uh, about what baptism is. Romans 6 um, and in verse 1. Let's read there. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? That is, live any longer in sin. This is a rhetorical question. Paul is asking Christians, how is it that we, uh, Christians, having died to sin, live in sin anymore? Th this dying to sin was supposed to be a conscious and, and, and zealous and um, very thoughtful um, decision. Whenever we decide to live a new life, um, it, it's a very important, a very serious decision that we have uh, we have made when we decide to to obey the gospel and follow after Christ. And in, in the Roman letter, Paul is is asking this question, uh, making this very clear. Um, he is reminding these Christians of their baptism into Christ. And let's look at what Paul is talking about here. Uh, again, how he says, how shall we who died to sin live any longer in sin? And now let's read a little further in Romans 6. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection." Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. And one more verse, if you skip down to verse 11. Likewise, you also Reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Have you died to sin? Paul makes it very clear to the Romans here in chapter 6 uh, that it was their baptism that freed them from sin. Uh, it was this, this baptism that identified with Christ's baptism in the grave that just was that Christ died, we die. Christ died, we die. And just as Christ was raised, we are raised. 
And, and folks, when you're baptized and obey the gospel for the remission of sins, and you come up having been obedient to God, you're free from sin. You have a new life. You are a new creature in Christ. Behold, all things are new, Paul told the, the Corinthians in the second letter. This is when this newness happens, by being obedient to the gospel. And obedience to the gospel means, as it says here, dying with Christ. And that happens in baptism. It's something that I believe the scriptures makes very clear as he, he reminds them of their baptism in the Christ. Their old man was crucified with him. Their death freed them from sin, enabling them to live with Christ and they therefore should consider themselves dead to sin. If, if we have not yet been baptized into Christ, then we have not yet died to sin. And that's something that we need to, to consider whenever we call ourselves a Christian, when we call ourselves a, a follower, a disciple of Christ. If we have not died to sin, and by no means we are not. We are not saved. We have not been forgiven. If we have not died to sin in the way that he describes the Romans were, and it's the same way that it's described throughout the, the New Testament scriptures, we need to consider this. And secondly, before we, we close the lesson, I'm going to ask you another question concerning Jesus' death on the cross. And one of the reasons why he died is so that we may live in righteousness. Um, are you living in righteousness? After all, that is why you died to sin. In 1 Peter 2 and verse uh, 24, again, he says that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. And again, Romans 6 and in verse 11, likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And also a little further down in Romans 6 and verse 16, he says this, Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin to death or of obedience to righteousness? But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, Yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine, doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. That's why we died in the first place, is to live for righteousness. And having died to sin... We are, uh, as the scriptures say, are, are supposed to mortify the flesh. It says in some translations um, to, to kill the, the flesh. Um, literally translated this word uh, means to utterly slay. When we mortify the flesh, we seek to bring the flesh under subjection. In 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 27, Paul says, But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. So we seek to bring the flesh under subjection. We seek to abstain from fleshly lusts, as 1 Peter 2 and verse 11. And we seek to put to death, that is, in other words, putting off the sinful deeds of the flesh. Paul says to the Colossians in chapter 3 and in verse 5, he says there, Colossians 3 and in verse 5, Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all of these, anger, wrath, 
malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. We have to put off the old man. Uh, that is uh, that is how we uh, one of the ways we live for righteousness. You know, we do away with the the things that are contrary to God, contrary to His His nature. And having died to sin, we are to live for righteousness. Paul tells uh, the Colossians in chapter three, verse ten. He goes on to say, after he he tells them what these these sins are that they had to put off he says and having put on and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him where there is neither greek nor jew circumcised nor uncircumcised barbarian scythian slave nor free but christ is all and in all therefore as the elect of god holy and beloved put on tender mercies kindness humility meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And that is how we, those are the, the, the virtues. Those are the, the, the fruits of the Spirit. Those are the things that we have to put on as Christians. Uh, Paul tells the Ephesians in Ephesians uh, 4, verses 22 through uh, 32, essentially uh, the same thing. He says in verse 24, And put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. He says, Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ forgave you. And... Again, uh, Peter gives a, a good list of, of, of things that we have to add um, to ourselves as we grow as, as Christians. We need to be diligent to, to grow in these things. Um, he says in verse 9, I'll read in 2 Peter 1, He who lacks these things is short-sighted, even the blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. I think we often forget, and that's why to me it's so sad that this this time of week is one of the only weeks a whole lot of people think about Jesus. One of the only weeks of the entire year um, that people um, think about what what Jesus accomplished on the cross, and then after the week is over, they go about their their ordinary regular lives as if nothing ever happened and that Jesus never died and until the next year. We, uh, Peter says that this is blindness, this is short-sightedness. Whenever we, we remember and we realize what Jesus did on the cross uh, and that he, when he died for us, it was for the purpose of cleansing us from these sins. Why should we live in, in the sin that he died for? And so I ask you again, has Jesus died for you in vain? Are you still living in those sins that Jesus died for? How serious are we uh, in, in living for righteousness? In 2 Peter 3.18, uh, Peter says, Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is something we must do. Whenever we obey the gospel, we, we don't just stop. We, we continue, and we continue to read and study and grow. And we, we, we do this um, for the rest of our life until we die or Christ comes back. But this is something that never stops. We never retire from being a Christian. We, we never take breaks from being a Christian. We never have weekends off. It's not an eight-to-five job. It's an all-day, everyday realization that our life is completely and utterly changed and we should be transformed and as paul told the romans in chapter 12 this happens when we renew our minds we renew our minds in the knowledge that christ has given us 
We do this by reading and studying and meditating on God's Word and letting it transform us. We, we adopt new habits. We do away with bad habits. We do away with bad friends. We do away with bad places. And we adopt new friends. That is the family of God. We adopt new habits. That is loving one another, doing good, kind things to one another, reading our Bible and praying uh, as often as we can. We are a completely different person. It changes the way that we parent. It changes the way that we, we befriend one another. Um, and, and all of this is possible by letting the Word of God infiltrate and influence our minds. How serious are we into, into changing our lives um, this is evidenced by uh, our willingness to learn and grow in the knowledge of Christ and our efforts to put off sin and put on Christ in our lives. And if we're not diligent in putting off sin and doing away with those, those sinful things and putting on Christ, then his death for us was in vain. And when we consider the death of Jesus on the cross, we should not just think of his death as just for me, as an atonement for, for my sins, but, but also providing the means where we may die to sin and live for righteousness. But folks, one of the reasons why Jesus died on the cross is so that we may serve him in righteousness. To be a servant of Christ it means some things. It, it means that we, we obey his command. And Jesus has given us things that we have to obey. Jesus commanded that we believe in him. Jesus commanded that we repent of our sins. If you don't all likewise repent, you will perish. And Paul said that in, the same, in, in Acts chapter 17. God commands all men everywhere to repent. If we don't repent of our sins, we're not following after the command of Christ. Um, Christ uh, commanded that we uh, confess him. Uh, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father in heaven. If you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father in heaven. And folks, uh, with repentance and uh, Christ commands baptism. As Mark said in Mark 16, verse 15 and 16, he says, Go preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. That's why in Acts 2.38, Peter said, Let every one of you re re repent and let every one of you be baptized for the remission of sins. That's why whenever Paul was recounting his conversion in Acts 22, um, to King Agrippa, uh, when Ananias uh, told him, Why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized, washing away your sins. That's why Philip, uh, whenever he uh, interpreted the scriptures for, um, for this Ethiopian eunuch preaching Jesus to him, as we read from Isaiah 53, the eunuch came to this conclusion on his own from this preaching. He says, what hinders me from being baptized? And, and what did Philip say? If you believe with all your heart, you may. And so they went into the water and Philip baptized them. And folks, he obeyed the gospel. And you're going to find that in, in, uh, in every conversion account in the book of Acts. That folks, in order to have their sins washed, in order to obey the gospel, as Lydia said, in order to be found faithful, they were baptized in the Christ. If you have not been baptized in the Christ, you have not put on Christ. If you have not obeyed the gospel fully in this way, you have not truly died to your sins. Those who are Christ have crucified the flesh. Galatians 5, 24, Romans 6, and verse 6. And so I'll end the lesson with this question. Are you Christ's? Folks, I hope these scriptures you've written down, um, you can go back through the video if you didn't have a chance and study them.
If you have any questions, just message me. I hope you are blessed by watching this. More than anything else, my desire is that we live for Christ. Those who call ourselves Christians, we need to make sure that we are truly His. We need to make sure that we are His by His standard, and that's only found in His Word. Don't take my word for it. Don't take your friend's word for it. Don't take the, the, the famous televangelist preacher's word for it. God gave us his word so that we may understand it and that we may obey it. And folks, you can do that too. Um, and I hope, my, I pray that this is not the only week of the year that you think about the death of Jesus. Um, I hope you do it every day. It'll change you. It'll allow you to, to be changed. If you dwell on what God did, It'll, it'll help you um, put away the old man and, and do as Paul had commanded and put away with the old man with, his, with the, fle the old flesh with its sin. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate your attention. Uh, this, remember, this, this time next week, we're going to talk about the significance of the resurrection. Uh, I hope you can tune in at 1030 uh, next Lord's Day morning. I should have another video at 6 o'clock um, tonight uh, for those who, who want to attend, and we'll, we'll continue going through uh, uh, the Book of Acts. Uh, I appreciate it. I hope everybody uh, stays well, stays safe, and Lord willing, we'll see you next time.